When I was a junior in high school, I was taking organic chemistry and I fell in love with the subject matter. I wanted to go into something science and medicine. I love football too. I was raised in a football family and so I printed off the top 25 football teams at the time and I printed off the top 25 pharmacy schools and I applied to all the schools that matched. So when I was taking my tour of Auburn's campus, I met with the recruiter for the pharmacy school at the time. And in that moment, in that tour, he gave me my first copy of the Auburn Creed. I read it and nothing has resonated with me that much ever. And I knew that was one of the reasons I knew I had to go to Auburn. After pharmacy school, I did two years of residency training specializing in infectious diseases because I thought drugs that we use to treat patients with infections were just absolutely fascinating. So after I completed my residency training, I took a job at the University of Pittsburgh, and then COVID happened. I emailed one of my colleagues and said, you know, I'm seeing some crazy orders come across in our patient population for COVID-19, and is anyone working on trying to summarize the data that's out there, the proposed experimental therapies, what is going into clinical trials as we try to learn about this disease and discover ways to treat our patients. Is there anyone that's summarizing that for UPMC Health System? I'd love to help. And he emailed me back and said, no one's working on this yet. Would love to see what you come up with. And so that led to the first draft of our first COVID-19 treatment guideline. We started truly putting out systems and protocols and information technology support across the entire healthcare system, rural critical access hospitals, community, and the academic and urban areas. They were all operating under the same oversight, which was our committee. I went from being kind of one pharmacist at one hospital to being the system lead pharmacist for all of COVID-19 therapeutics, basically by asking if anyone was writing a guideline the other major thing I've taken on in the past year is I'm the lead pharmacist for the UPMC monoclonal antibody network, which is just this massive coordinated care system. And then that translated into the outpatient work around November 2020 when monoclonal antibodies received emergency use authorization. Now we had to shift from what we had built inpatient into the whole vast world of outpatient care. Monoclonal antibodies are highly effective, but they are logistically challenging to get to patients, and it takes a whole village of people to coordinate this. And so we had started this system, and the White House caught wind of this and said, we've invested in all of these drugs, and people aren't using them, and you guys seem to have figured out how to use them. We want to help you do more of this. And so with these efforts from, again, just a really incredible team of people, we were able to go from treating about 3% of all eligible patients to about 30% of eligible patients in just shy of a couple months, which is just a really, really tremendous increase in access and something we're really, really proud of. What I've learned and what I take with me and what I try to teach is that if something's not being done or we think something can be approved upon, don't ever be afraid to, to step forward and challenge the status quo and, and ask why not. A lot of this is really hard work, but if you're doing it for the right reasons, which go into mutual helpfulness, which is displaying kindness always and knowing that I don't do any of this alone. I could not accomplish anything without just the tremendous teams I've been really blessed to be a part of. And then the human touch, which for me and in my work now is just putting the patient first always. And if we do what we do with that in mind and we work hard and we work together, it just makes it all worth it. And that is what Auburn taught me. Thank you for this incredible honor and to the Lifetime Achievement Award recipients here tonight, congratulations. And thank you for your service and your legacy to our beloved university. So I grew up moving a lot. My dad worked for the government and I was never really from anywhere until I came to Auburn. I think the first time I read the Auburn Creed, I knew I was home. I believe in work, hard work. Those are six words that got me through some pretty challenging times over the years and that I continue to have above my desk today. First, I want to thank my mom and dad who are here with me tonight for raising me to work hard and to love sports. I would not have found Auburn otherwise. 
for the countless sacrifices you made for me and for our family over the years. I can never repay you, but I promise I'll always try to make you proud. My brother, my sister-in-law, my niece, and my sister, they couldn't be here tonight, but they make me a better person just by being who they are, and this isn't possible without them. My grandfather and my best friend, he passed away in June, um, but I want to thank him for showing me what it means to be truly servant-hearted and to get more joy out of giving than receiving, and he taught me that kindness comes at no cost, but it is our most precious commodity. I wish you were here. <laughs> to Janie Marino, my sorority advisor, who told me freshman year when I stepped on campus that I better go buy some lipstick and learn to wear it, you are. <laughs> you are so much of the Auburn woman that I came to be, and I'm so thankful for you. <laughs> To Emily Doucette, who's a Cater Society sister, uh, you are the epitome of an Auburn woman in my eyes. Thank you for knowing that we could build something great together, and here's to recruiting persons who are better than ourselves. To Dr. Charles Oosley, who met a little girl in high school and believed in her so fiercely that she believed in herself, too. And to the late Dr. Anne Marie Lyles, who volunteered her free time to travel with us as pharmacy students on the weekends up to Birmingham. We started a free clinic with UAB because, of course, they have a medical school, we have a pharmacy school. And I was exposed to interprofessional practice and direct patient care in our underserved communities for the first time. And I carry those patients with me, and they shaped the person and the pharmacist I am today. She was really a tremendous faculty member. And then finally, Dr. Jack DeRyder, who insisted on keeping chemical structures in the curriculum of antibiotics. He's a huge reason of why I fell in love with infectious diseases. Dr. Courtney Watts Alexander, who's here tonight, man, did I look up to you in school. And you showed me everything that we could elevate our profession to be. Julia Richak, you've always been there. Thank you for being here tonight. And then finally, Dr. Erica Collier Glover, my best friend. I would not be standing here without you, and I think you know why. And then to everyone at the Auburn University Colleges of Science and Mathematics, the Harrison College of Pharmacy, the University of Wisconsin, and now UPMC, there are so many names to state, but I'll just leave it at I am so genuinely lucky to be a member of those families and to learn from so many amazing people. The COVID-19 pandemic ravaged our communities and it changed our lives in a way that no one asked for and certainly none of us predicted. What we have been through in the past few years as humans is unnatural, it's devastating, and it's harder work than we ever thought we'd ever have to face. But along with that unimaginable loss, we also saw unprecedented, yes, I use that word, <laughs> scientific discovery and global collaboration. We have never worked together as a healthcare community like we have in the past two years, and we are so amazingly lucky to have discovered multiple highly effective vaccines within a year. Without them, it is impossible to comprehend the excess loss that we would have suffered as a society. And amidst all of that, I was extremely fortunate to lead teams of hundreds and hundreds of exceptional people who went to work every day, working so hard to find answers. Within a year, the trials that we built in Pittsburgh and the trials that we collaborated to build across the world discovered two life-saving therapies and a handful of others which improve outcomes of patients infected with COVID. And this isn't just done by the nurses and the doctors and the pharmacists and the respiratory therapists and every other frontline worker, but really by the back of the house crew that is holding our healthcare infrastructure together. Those that work in information technology, patient relations, internal and external communications, media, supply chain, administration, space. Did you know there are entire teams of people that exist solely to find clinic space? So wave after wave, we can set up and take down places to treat patients as needed. This award tonight is for every single one of them. I cannot fully capture the enormity of their selflessness, their commitment to mutual helpfulness, and how they foster the human touch in this short speech, which is now bordering on a long speech, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but 
But it is a privilege to represent pharmacists tonight, particularly infectious diseases pharmacists who have picked up the gauntlet of COVID-19 therapeutics, writing guidelines, updating order sets, disseminating education, and coordinating healthcare delivery across the care continuum constantly in this ever-changing space over the past two years. But despite all of those efforts, we lost over a million Americans this year in this pandemic. And amidst that, I think we need to recognize that the grim reality of structural inequity existing in our country and in our communities was laid bare. And throughout this pandemic, those that live in disadvantaged neighborhoods, who work in public service, who are unable to access or afford healthcare, suffered COVID-19 at a rate three to five times those who are fortunate and have more resources. Your zip code should not determine whether you live or die, and healthcare is a human right. <laughs> By embedding clinical decision-making for evaluating COVID-19 therapeutics into the point of care at all of our facilities, from critical access sites to urban academic centers, we were able to ensure that every single patient within the UPMC system had the same opportunities for care throughout this pandemic. So again, to the village of healthcare workers and support staff that made that happen, thank you. My sincerest hope is that we can continue these efforts through and beyond this pandemic, expanding into every other care area so that we can continue to meet patients where they are and optimize the outcomes for everyone in our communities. And so tonight I want to end, especially in light of some recent events, that I need to acknowledge that the road is not always easy, and doing the right thing is not always easy. It's, in fact, it's, it's work. It's hard work. But doing the right thing is always right. And so what I want to end with tonight is I also need to say that to everyone who's ever been put in a position of feeling like you have to compromise your values and belief system in order to achieve a career milestone, or anyone who's ever had someone in a position of power make them feel like less, this is for you. I see you and I promise you that there is a way through that and eventually up and we can and we are building a better future. A fellow, a fellow cater woman once said that if you throw away your integrity for power and influence, you have already lost your power and influence. The actions of others... The actions of others that we may read about or hear about do not define us, nor do they hinder our ability to step forward into the light and eventually to be that light. Tonight, I proudly represent the Auburn University Harrison College of Pharmacy, and I want to thank everyone from the bottom of my heart for this tremendous honor. I believe in Auburn and love it. War Eagle.